we're going to be doing something a little different for this review. All the other reviews I've done before have been movies released in the past 20 years. This review is going to change that. Let's hop in our time machine for this next pair of reviews. We better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. We're going to be talking about two silent films this time. First, let's take a look at Romeo and Juliet from 1911, directed by Barry O'Neill. He directed 55 other silent movies during the early 1900s. The only issue with the version that I'm using is that it has been slightly altered from the original version. New dialogue and title cards were added, as well as some very out of place music. It is so out of place that it becomes incredibly distracting, especially since the music is the only sound in the entire movie. The plot of the movie is pretty much what you would expect. Since it was released during a time when movies consisted of only one reel of film, movies lasted only around 15 to 20 minutes. It is condensed to the point where Romeo, Juliet, and Friar Lawrence are the only named characters, and their names are only mentioned once or twice during the dialogue cards. It pretty much starts with the street brawl, passes over all of the family politics, and goes straight to the couple's doomed plot, and finally ends with their deaths. Romeo is played by George Lessie, whose most well-known role was in the Marx Brothers film Go West. Juliet is played by actress Julie M. Taylor, who acted with Lessie before in the film The Declaration of Independence. Romeo and Juliet was actually her final role as an actress. And finally, Friar Lawrence is played by Robert Holt, which this was also his only role. Overall, this film condenses the story down to 15 minutes pretty well. It loses a lot of the nuances from the dialogue and family plots, but with the technology they add, it's a pretty well done version of the story. Next is King Lear, released in Italy in 1910. This film was directed by Girolamo Savio, who was also assistant director on a film adaptation of Othello. The first thing you'll notice about this film is that it's partially in color. This is actually due to a process which involves hand tinting parts of the film. However, not all of the film contains this tinting. It briefly goes back to black and white and sometimes purple at points. Again, it is a pretty condensed version of the story, but there are some differences. Most out of place is the fact that Lear owns a Labrador for some reason. Also, in other film versions, Lear is shown spiraling into madness through his physical appearance. In this version, Lear starts by looking crazy and stays looking crazy. He looks like a combination between Gandalf and Santa Claus. However, his body language implies that he is going crazy. He keeps pointing to the sky, petting his servants, and physically assaults one of the servants at one point. It is pretty interesting. Ornette Novelli plays Lear very well. He also played Shylock in 1911's Merchant of Venice. Lear's daughters are only highlighted at the beginning and the end. Other than Cordelia's, their husbands aren't even mentioned. In fact, they aren't even credited in the credits. Again, much nuance is lost, and it hits on all the major events in Lear's arc. Overall, looking at these older films shows how much film adaptations of Shakespeare's work have changed over the years. It makes sense that we end the series of reviews with these two films, as it shows the inspiration for the more modern adaptations. I also wanted to attempt to do an overview of the Macbeth film from around this period, but it's almost impossible to find. Only one copy exists on a single roll of film in the Library of Congress, so unfortunately, I couldn't get a hold of it. So that's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this series of reviews.